David here with Fig Food on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have something exciting for you. It is the first pen from the revived brand Omas, and that would be the Omas Ojiva 222. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over uh, a little bit about the company Omas and its revival. Uh, I'm going to go over the parts and features of this new pen, show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Omas for providing the pen that you will see today on loan for review. Okay, this is going to be a bit of information, but I feel it's important before we get a closer look at this pen. Uh, Omas was originally founded back in 1925 in Bologna, Italy by a gentleman by the name of Armando Simoni. Omas is actually an acronym. It stands for Officina Meccanica Armando Simoni. Officina Meccanica translates from Italian as Mechanics Workshop. Uh, Armando was fond of Greek culture and he translated that passion into many of his pen designs. The brand was beloved by collectors, but in the early 2000s, the company was having financial issues. It passed through several owners, and eventually in 2015, they closed their doors for good and inventory was liquidated. It's my understanding a number of employees are now working for Scribo. Now, the story of Omas after this time is a bit fractured, complicated, and very nuanced. Um, I've heard conflicting stories as to who owns certain rights, uh, who owns what inventory, who has certain important equipment. Uh, it's not my intention here to do a deep investigation into who owns what and what is fact and what is fiction. Uh, admittedly, I am glossing over a lot of details here for the sake of time. Uh, the revival of a brand can be controversial. Uh, people tend to have strong opinions about the things that they care for. Uh, in my opinion, some revivals have gone very well, something like Caveco, for example. And others, you know, it hasn't been as well received. Whenever a brand is revived, there will be people who rejoice in being able to purchase new pens from a beloved brand. Uh, and there will be others who find issue with any new owners and critique how they do business or how the revival is handled. Uh, those folks will typically say something like, you know, this isn't the real Omas. Uh, both opinions are fair, but I tend to lean toward the first camp. Um, if I feel the company is on the up and up and had the best interest uh, and intentions and good big business practices, then I'm all for bringing something like this back. Uh, the key word there is business. Uh, if you are running a business, it is a historically proven way to expand your footprint uh, by acquisition, uh, whether it be an existing brand or the rights to one that is already known by the community. Uh, it's instant brand recognition. So what is going on with Omas? Uh, the U.S. rights for the brand were purchased by a partnership between Narwhal and Manu Calazzoni uh, from the Penn family. Uh, I believe that Manu has purchased a number of Omas assets when they were up for sale, uh, mainly nibs and rod stock. Uh, they posted a video where Manu visited the artisans in Italy who made the pen you will see here in just a minute. Uh, in the video, I felt the company was very open with what they're doing with the brand, as well as uh, details behind manufacturing. Uh, what this is is not a relaunch of the original brand with original employees and original equipment. Uh, this is a, a bit of a rebirth. Uh, the company is working to maintain as much of the original brand as possible, but there will be new aspects of the company and offerings as well. Okay, enough background and talk. Let's actually take a look at the company's first new Omas offering to see if it lives up to the venerated Omas name. The pen arrives in this box with the familiar Omas logo. The sleeve slides off and underneath we have a box and the slides open and there is a logo on the flap and a logo on the actual box and then inside we have a logo on the inside of the box and we have a pen this is the omas ojiva 222 uh, the pen is made from one of the more rare omas materials which is this blue saffron celluloid um, I do like this celluloid. It has a really nice combination of darker blue and brownish orange. It has a creamy look to the material. It has a classic cigar shape and the trim is gold plated. 
Um, it's not an exact replica of the original Ojiva model. This is what it looks like in comparison to an Omas Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel. Uh, you can see here that the new one is slightly longer and a bit thicker as well. It's a version inspired by its namesake model, but not intended to be an exact duplicate. Though I have been told there are plans to launch some of the previous Omas models based on the original blueprints, so that should be exciting. Um, I've always been a big fan of the 360, but I've never found one with the ideal combination of attractive aesthetic and affordable price. Uh, they tend to be rather expensive pens. The model is called the 222 for a couple of different reasons. First of all, this is a limited edition of 222 units, but the name also refers to February 22nd, 2022, which was the date the idea of reviving Omas began. Uh, Ogiva is the Italian term for the top of an arch. Uh, in English, uh, that word is ogive. Uh, I just think Ogiva sounds a lot nicer of a name uh, for a pen than ogive, so I think it's good they went with the Italian there. Uh, the top of the cap is rounded. Uh, this transitions into the clip. Um, I've always been a big fan of the wheeled clip. Um, I find this one to be easy to use and accommodating to materials of varying thicknesses. Uh, the cap transitions into the dual bands. There is a smaller gold-plated band and then there's a larger one. Uh, it is laser engraved with the company name and Italy. I will say that with the naked eye, the laser engraving looks fine, but when you look at it with some magnification, the telltale uh, lines are visible and you can see the individual lines on the edges, which isn't my favorite look. Uh, the band angles down slightly, reducing the step down to the barrel, which tapers down very slightly before it reaches another thin gold band, signifying the beginning of the piston knob, and the end of the knob is rounded. Uh, on the barrel, it is engraved with the company name, and then it says Ojiva 222 edition, and then the number of this special pen. Um, I will say, in my opinion, that this laser engraving here leaves something to be desired. Um, I don't find the large grooves here to be very attractive, and they are visible to the naked eye. Personally, I would have preferred no engraving to what they did here. The cap twists off with one and a quarter rotations, and underneath we have this number six sized 18 karat gold nib. Uh, this is a nib from the original Omas stock. Um, I have heard conflicting information about Omas nibs. Uh, some have said Omas manufactured their own nibs in house, and others have told me that they were manufactured by Yovo, and Omas tuned them in house to meet their own specifications. Um, if they are indeed Yovo nibs, uh, I like the tuning that they have done to them. They don't feel like stock Yovo 18 karat gold nibs. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but I feel that they uh, are both wetter and softer than Yovo nibs. Uh, the nib is available in fine, medium, and broad. And I did notice that on some retailers they had extra fine, double broad, as well as oblique medium options as well. And here's a look at the Ebonite feed. I really love the low profile look of this ebonite feed. I think it looks really sharp. The section begins with a flare and angles up until you reach a second branded laser engraved band. Then you have the threads and a medium sized step up to the remainder of the barrel. I like that on this band the company name is aligned with the nib. That would have significantly bugged me if the logo was off to one side or even off center a noticeable amount. Um, I also like the placement of the band. Um, I find the Ojiva to be very comfortable in the hand and well balanced. Um, the cap really doesn't post. Um, I wish it either clearly did or clearly did not. Um, if you affix it here, it basically is attached to the piston knob and doesn't post deeply. So if you happen to rotate the cap when taking it off, you're at risk of engaging the piston knob, which could lead to the expulsion of some ink. So I prefer to use this pen unposted. Uh, since I mentioned the piston knob, you can safely deduce this as a piston filler. Uh, there is an internal cylinder so that the ink doesn't in con come in contact with the celluloid, which is a good thing. Uh, the Omas Ojiva 222 is available from a number of retailers and has a price of $895. Um, I know that Omas is attempting to re-enter the market as a luxury brand, so I would not anticipate we would be seeing much in the way of uh, entry-level pens from them. But that was the same with the original incarnation of the brand.
Um, I do feel the price is on the high end of the valuation proposition for this particular pen though. There's things that I really care for on this model. I think the material looks really nice and the writing performance of the nib is outstanding. There's just a few small details like the engraving on the barrel that I feel could be improved upon for future models from this company. But in the end, I'm glad to see the Omas name live on and I'm looking forward to seeing what the company comes up with in the near future to continue the legacy of the brand. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Omas Ojiva 222. I wanted to give you another closer look at that material. Um, I think the material does look nice. I think that the overall shape of the pen is nice as well. Um, in regard to some size comparisons with some other Omos models, um, I have a couple in my collection. I showed you this one previously. This is the uh, Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel. Uh, and then here was my first Omas, which is the My Lord, which was my first Arco pen. I really, really wanted that pen. If you uh, hear the review of that one, I talk about kind of my grail search for that particular pen. Uh, and then here it is with a Sailor King of Pen, and that is in the Royal Tangerine. In regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapien, and here it is with a Pelican M1000, and then finally here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Visconti Homo Sapiens. So here we go with the writing sample for the Omas Ojiva. This is the 222, and this is a medium 18 karat gold nib. And I thought that appropriately enough, I should break out a bottle of ink, which is my Omas Blue. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice saturated darker blue uh, in comparison to something like Lamy's blue, which is a little bit lighter, as well as Montegrappa's blue, which is a little bit lighter. This is what the bottles look like. I always thought this was an interesting design so that when you were filling it up, you could tilt it on its side and then you had better access to the ink and the facets here really helped with that. So I thought this was a cool uh, design. Maybe they'll bring this back as well. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I love Omas nibs. They are very wet very juicy. You can get lots of line variation out of them. So they are fairly flexible, even, um, even on just this non-flex model. Um, I think I pushed it just a little too far there. But in regard to ink flow, it is rather juicy. It is rather soft uh, with just a hint of feedback. The Omos nibs are just outstanding. I really enjoy them. And in regard to reverse writing, It's not bad, it's not scratchy and it gets the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, have a little bit of a skip there. So there was a little bit of skip there at the end. So there we have the new Omas Ojiva 222. Um, I think that's an interesting first pen to come out from this revived company, uh, and I'm interested to seeing what they're going to do in the future. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.